We welcome in uh, our guest, Nick Deal. He's uh, kind of a big deal. Nick, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. You do many things in the community. It is under the umbrella of the executive director of the airport authority in which you appear today. Yes, sir. Right ahead of this 4th of July. Yep, that's exactly right. You got something to promote. We have got our annual independence celebration coming up, and that's going to be a fun event this year, as I think it is every year. Uh, We always have bands. We have a kid's village out there. We have um, a bunch of food trucks, a bunch of other vendors. Where is out there? Um, It's it's at the airport. It's... um, uh, the, if somebody wants to plug it into their GPS, plug in 226 Pilot Way, and it will take you there. But if you get off the, um, if you get off Exit 8, or if you come down Route 11, you will see the signs. Uh, it's uh, it's right off of Novak Drive, uh, on the on the essentially on the south side of the airport, and um, we have a big field out there. It's about 25 acres, uh, and this event is one that uh, like this is our third year, and um, it is uh, we do this in. Uh, we do this coordination with the uh, with Berkeley County uh, and with CMC uh, Metals, who is our is our primary sponsor for this event. And um, we it's a it's a free event, and um, so people can come out and stay as long as they want. Um, and this year we have uh, I think we have ten food trucks. We have a oh, couple dozen uh, various vendors and, and displays and we have an expanded kids village thanks to lovely pixels and we also have um, a uh, we have a beer garden there too it's gonna be hot so people might might appreciate that um, and this year we are three bands are J3 which is a local band and then the uh, Nathan Bargess band which uh, some of you may have heard of he's great and, by the way yeah he really is it's it's a, and it's great to have that kind of local talent in the area and they and I know he's he's known outside of the area too but it's it's great to have him we had him on the show I think he had either just come back from Nashville or was about to take off for Nashville. I can't remember exactly. But uh, he brought his guitar in, played a few tunes, and just blew us away. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. And uh, then at, at 8 o'clock, uh, we have 38 Special. And uh, my, my 25-year-old son asked 38 what? And so I was a bit offended by that. But other than <laughs> <laughs> so those of you my age or, or a little older, the younger might appreciate Thirty Eight Special. It's a it's a great great band. Uh, they still have uh, some of the original, I kind think, of couple of the original members, and uh, it should be a it should be a fantastic show. And then we top it off with fireworks, and so it's a it's a very nice event. Um, and like I said, it's it's a free event. Three three p.m. is when the gates open. Uh, we encourage everybody to come out. Whether you come out and just you know enjoy the the food trucks and some of the music, which starts at four thirty in the afternoon, or you stay for the entire event, um, it's a lot of fun. And this will be Thursday the fourth. No, it's actually on the June 29th, which June 29th. is this Saturday. My apologies. Yep, this okay. Saturday. And um, yeah, you can you can bring out some folding chairs or a blanket and sit out on the lawn um there will be uh there are a a few areas on the sides where you can put up a uh, like an umbrella or something so if you just want to stay out of the stay out of the uh the heat a little more um and then also for the uh for the bands there is a uh there's a little area in the front there it's it's basically stage seating there there i think there is a charge for i think it's like ten dollars so it's not much but you can sit right down front uh, for the event, those seats are limited. I think there's only 200 of them. Can I ask you the obvious question as to why it's not on Thursday the 4th? Well, because we try to do this the Saturday before the 4th, and we've done it like that every year. And the reason we do that is because we recognize that uh, we don't want to interfere with the city. Uh, the city of Martinsburg has also in the past been su- been supporters of this event, and they have their own as well, and they're doing a big show this year. And so we just felt like it was out of, out of respect for everybody else. We tried to do those on the Saturday before the 4th. And we also know a lot of people like to go out of town so uh, where they can enjoy this and then spend their, spend their time on vacation. So. That's great. Uh, and in regards to parking. So when you come in, you can, there are two options. Uh, when you, m- most people that have been there before are familiar with parking in the fields um, around the event. Um, so when you, you can come in off of exit eight or again, off of you're going south um, off of uh, exit uh, or off of route 11, you can turn on to Novak Drive, which is right across from the sheets uh, there. And uh, on the other side of that is uh, I think development drive. Um, so 
you can go in that way or our other option is and we did this specifically because when people leave we the first year we had a lot more people than we thought and traffic took a while to get out and so now uh, we work with the berkeley county sheriff's department and with the West Virginia State Police, and we um, all the traffic goes out and goes to the right out of the fields and goes to the interstate, and they can go north or south on the interstate to wherever they want to go. And that gets that that frees the fields pretty quickly. We get a lot of cars out of there fast. But that being said, we have some people that live in the immediate area that have always said, "Gee, it's kind of frustrating to have to drive <laughs> have to drive out to the interstate to come right back around to where we just were." So what we've done is we've this year provided we're providing in um, uh, you know in, in uh, uh, cooperation with uh, EPTA who is having their groundbreaking tomorrow um, for their new building right and you're for our new building obviously associated with EPTA yes I am well. actually their board chair so I'm, I'm I know these folks pretty well mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a, it's a just as a side note it's fantastic public transportation is critical to the growth of any community and uh, Elaine Bartleson and the staff at EPTA do a fantastic job at providing on-time transportation through our through our pretty extensive bus service system and so they will be providing transportation from our terminal. The terminal is at 170 Aviation Way. They can, uh, it, and, and you can park there for 10 bucks, as many people as you can pack in your car, and all of you can pile on a bus, and we will take the bus, we will escort buses through the airport uh, so there won't be any traffic to hold them up, and they will be able to do uh, runs all day and all evening to drop people off and pick people up from the event. And so if you live local, we encourage you to go over to the terminal, park there, and hop on a bus, and you can be, uh, you can be at the event in about three minutes from the bus stop, and you can be back at your car in about three minutes from the event. And where's the terminal again? The terminal is at 170 Aviation Way in Martinsburg. Will there be a lot of signage that yes, make all be this si very clear? There'll be signage in a lot of places. Shuttle parking, there will not be signage for shuttle parking off of um, I-81, but there will be signs for shuttle parking um, off of Paints Ford Road and off Kelly Island Road and uh, in Route 11 there. What time do you expect the fireworks to begin, Nick? About 9.30? Yeah, about 9.30, 9.40. And you cannot typically. park along the shoulder of I-81 to watch fireworks. That is correct. The state police frown upon that. Yeah, and, and from a life and death yeah. standpoint, that would also it's not work out well. right. And even off of Route 11, they, they don't like you to do that either. So in the fields, <clears throat> the only event I've, I've done at the airport was the air show last year, mm -hmm. which, yep. by the way, was spectacular. Oh, thank you. Um, I, so if I'm coming in just for the fireworks... Right. When, when you have an Irish complexion, you don't stand out in the sun all day. It's just <laughs> right. a bad idea. Bring your umbrella. Yeah. Um, so coming in, can can I bring a picnic lunch and eat in the fields where we park? Is that yep. allowed? We, so we allow small coolers, and if you bring in a, in a, in a bag with some – obviously, if you're hauling a wagon in with a couple hundred pieces of fried chicken, people – you know, we just try to discourage that because we do have food vendors, but you are welcome to bring some snacks and things and bring drinks in if you need to. Not out, we, you can have no alcoholic drinks that you bring onto the field, but you can bring some snacks. And a lot of people do that. They throw down a blanket. They have themselves a little picnic there. And, and is the viewing area things. for the fireworks kind of down on the tarmac? No, actually, it's, everything is outside the fence, is what we call it at the airport. So, okay. the um, so it's not where the food vendors were for the air show. No, the whole event is actually. So, if you recall where the parking area was for the air show, mm -hmm. that's where this event is. Okay, it's in that. It's in what was a great big parking field for the air show. It's um, that the event, the entire event is there, and it's it lends itself nicely to uh, to a band and to the fireworks because it. it the, it actually gently slopes, which you don't really pay, notice when you're on it. But when you're sitting there, you can realize that it, it slopes down. And so the band is always at the bottom of the of the field, and then the fireworks are um, just off to your left, right on the on just to the left of the stage. So you can sit right where you are the entire time. Will you have music during the fireworks this year? We will. We um, synchronize. It's just, it's a the music that we play during the fireworks is actually a soundtrack from the fireworks company. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, we have that. Um, every year. What time will the bands begin playing? Uh, the bands begin playing. J3 starts at 4.30. Uh, 6 o'clock, Nate Bar Nathan Barges Band comes on, and then 38 Specials at 8. That's the headliners, baby. Yes, sir. Big hit with Hold On Loosely. It, yep, really. I think it was probably their biggest hit. I would say. And I think that came out when I was in high school. So Yeah, they're kind of right at the end of the Southern Rock 
craze. Yeah, you know, they kind of caught the tail end of that. Yeah, and it was a uh, it was it was a great band actually. I remember in college we you could walk up and down the dorm and listen to <laughs> several people playing it. So mm-hmm. it's uh yeah it's it's a great band. We were excited to get them. Yeah, that's a that's a good get there. And uh, in regards to tomorrow's groundbreaking ceremony with EPTA, Nick, what can you yeah. tell us? So that's going to be very exciting. We have been uh, we've been talking about a new facility for gosh probably. 10 years um, and I have been on that board for about that long we uh, have right now our building is out on Novak Drive and that's where we send all of our buses from every day but we have a we, we have a whole lot of deadhead miles every single bus is traveling usually a couple at least two sometimes five miles before they ever get to where they're picking up passengers and our busiest area is in martinsburg in the middle of town and so um we purchased some property at the corner of raleigh street and race and uh if you people remember where the old i think it was the old southern states property at one time and we're going to tear every bit of that down and put up a brand new facility that's going to be fantastic for people uh to, they can they can do it will there be a park and ride there there'll be plugins for electric cars there there'll be um there'll be a uh, an area with an awning so if the weather's not great you can sit under the awning and wait for the bus and there, our transfer station will be there uh, so we think it's going to be a great improvement to that area of martinsburg and we um we, we think that the uh the city is um is going to be happy that we're that we're at that location that's right now we do a lot of our transfer stuff over by the train station and that gets a little tricky sometimes because it's very busy and it's very tight over there does this uh, effectively get you out of all those other buildings and into one central complex or will you still have some satellite areas no we're actually primarily going to be just downtown um we will um we're, we'll be selling our building um on novak drive and um, and it's a great it's a beautiful facility it's just it's we outgrew it almost immediately and so we've yeah. been we've been parking buses outside and, and and trying to park them we've had to park them off site sometimes it's just been very difficult to try to fit into that little two acre area that we have now and so the the new place is going to be fantastic we encourage you all to go out and take a look at it and and continue to watch the progress I don't know if we still do, but I know we used to have a, f- a few of those vehicles had the WRNR wraps on them, and people would think that they were station vehicles. Yep. Matter of fact, I did the first time I saw one. <laughs> I was like, did they buy a wrap or did they buy the bus? Yeah. Is Rob driving that? Is that, is that him in there? He cut me off. Wow. Yeah. Like, like, no, that Romy wasn't reporter. me. That totally was not me. Yeah. So back to the fireworks. People mm-hmm. had to bring pets. No pets. No pets. And people yeah. had to bring their personal fireworks. No, absolutely okay. not. Uh, you eliminate your dog and your son and some <laughs> questions online yeah, yeah yeah we and and you're exactly right we we typically do have people that try to be, bring uh pets and as as you all probably know it pets and loud noises and fireworks and loud bands don't don't go well together Correct. and we just simply can't we can't permit those unless it is actually a service animal um they are not permitted out there uh, William Whittington wants me to ask if the Navy Blue Angels are coming as scheduled next year. So I'm glad you asked that question. They are not coming next year. We are working with them to come the following year. We cannot, we can't do that size show on the civilian side of the airport. Uh, we would have to have the support of the 167th. They are going to be uh, wrapped up in a lot of things next year in 25 when the Blue Angels um, wanted to come. And the Blue Angels have also asked to change the date because they had an issue on their side. And so we are pushing for 2026. No promises, no guarantees. But that's what we're shooting for is we're working in in coordination with the 167th to provide uh, that show to the to the general public for um, sometime in the fall of 26. If it if it all goes well, that will be a parking and traffic issue. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a tra- <laughs> yeah. If, if you, it's it's awesome to watch the Blue Angels, yeah. Thunderbirds, any of those things, but it's going to be a traffic nightmare. So we will have the state police, the, the sheriff's department, and everybody else <laughs> on board for that one. <laughs> Nick Deal, our guest here on the program. Nick, let's talk about the direction of the airport in general. And, and first and foremost, I'd like to know if the possibility of the flight charter school is still in the mix for the future of the airport. So we are still talking about that, but but we also so we this is some exciting news that we really haven't discussed thoroughly. Uh, Shepherd University 
uh, partnered with us a, a couple of years ago to provide a um, to provide some aviation education. They have a bachelor's degree in uh, business administration with a concentration in aviation that they offer now uh, through the airport. And now we have Marshall University who is has opened their flight school there. Marshall University is on site, and they are um, they're doing fl- some flight lessons now, but they'll start they'll they'll start in in uh, you know, in a, in a more controlled classroom environment um, in uh, the fall, and they'll be offering bachelor's degrees in aviation and a bunch of other things. And Blue Ridge Community and Technical College is wrapping up uh, some work on offering an aviation uh, maintenance program that will also be at the airport ultimately. And so those are very exciting. Those are all still in the works, but they're they're uh, they're very exciting. Uh, going to be very exciting options at the airport and we're hoping to continue to expand and to grow that the our airport is the it's the largest it's it's the longest widest and heaviest runway in the state of west virginia um it is we're the second busiest airport in the state of west virginia and we don't have commercial um air service there and so that's i think that's saying something and most of our tra- about 10 percent of our traffic is the military and all the rest is uh, civilian aviation and so we're um, we do the best that we can to keep up with that we have good reviews through our fixed based operation uh, I have a fantastic staff out there I can't say enough about good about them they all work and they all work very very hard to make our airport the best airport it can possibly be and with the educational opportunities we anticipate quite a bit of business growth with that as well we already have over 20 businesses on the field, and uh, we think we're going to see some larger uh, businesses and more businesses in the in the next few years because of the educational opportunities, thanks to these higher education partners. You mentioned commercial air traffic and not having any of that. If you could attract that, are you permitted to at the airport? So we are permitted to. That's a and that might be a. A discussion for another another show because it's a long one. But uh, to make it short, we used to have commercial service. The uh, the uh, FAA uh, decided back in the '80s they weren't going to fund smaller airports anymore, and so you had to actually determine back then whether you were in or out of this system that is now closed. And um, we felt like since Hagerstown was had already said yes, we want to be in the system back in the '80s. We said okay, well we'll. Um, you know, we're not going to do that because we know that we don't have the the mass here to be able to do that in Martinsburg. Now, keep in mind, this is back in the 80s. Now we've grown quite a bit, but I mean, the Hagerstown Airport tried for, you know, over a decade to to keep their commercial service certification. They do have, they are still a part one, uh, part 139 airport, which means they can have um, commercial service there, but they do not have daily commercial service in Hagerstown anymore. The FAA uh, pulled their pulled their permit for that a long time ago um, because they couldn't keep the, they couldn't bring in the number of um, number of flyers that they needed to to be able to to keep that. And it and they tried for for a long long time. Um, they uh, now have uh, Neil Doran at the helm there, who was um, the Neil was our uh, was at the airport he was my right hand for a long time out there and i think that he has really increased the number he's increased the number of allegiant flights in and out of the airport and he's doing a fantastic job there and i see growth there had he been there a few years ago they might still have commercial service but um it's i i don't think that we are going to I, i see us maybe at some point in the future having commercial service but it probably won't be in my lifetime can you fly FedEx, UPS planes in and out of there, and, and does that happen daily? We can fly literally anything in and out of there. It does not happen daily, but we would like to. So if anybody from FedEx or UPS is listening, please bring your entire air freight to our airport. <laughs> where, where do they currently land? Is it more uh, in the D.C., Baltimore area, and then yeah, they truck so, it out here? Yeah, most of them land in uh, in either Dulles or, or BWI. And the, the reason they do it, we've actually talked to them and um, Amazon and some of the other big carriers. And the reason they like to land there is because they can take freight from those aircraft and put them on other air. Like, for example, if um, FedEx has something that needs to go to Key West the next day, I don't have a flight going to Key West, but Dulles does. And so they like to be able to put 
air to put things on in the bellies of other smaller air or of other uh, commercial aircraft to be able to get where they need to go and that's very convenient for them so we are we actually are in the process of a study right now an air cargo study to determine what we need to be able to do uh, to be one of the a destination carrier um, I mean I mean I, and I already know the answer to that we need a business here that needs to have air freight right now none of the businesses in the area need air freight and so that's been the, the struggle is and but we work very closely with the Berkeley County Development Authority they've always been a great partner to us as has the West Virginia Development Office and we are working toward looking at some businesses that might need air freight and so we could offer a package deal that's interesting someone like Macy's wouldn't need air freight Macy's ships all their stuff through um, FedEx and UPS and so they don't have the, they don't they don't do their own they need air freight but they mm -hmm. don't have their own um, they don't have their own service, and so they have to rely on others, and those others happen to be in Baltimore and Dulles. Understandable. Um, minute left, Nick. Go ahead and address this Saturday, if you could wrap it up. All right, so uh, if you need some additional information, go to flymrb.com. That's our website, flymrb.com. Um, you'll have all the information you need there. But gates open at, at 3 p.m. Uh, it should be a fantastic, uh, family-friendly event. Uh, we hope to see you out there. Um, certainly thanks to CMC and our other sponsors and to Berkeley County, uh, Berkeley County Commission for their support of this event. And this is all free. Yes, sir. It's all free. You have food trucks on hand. Those aren't free. Those aren't free. Yeah. The parking over in the terminal is not free, but, but, but most of it is. But otherwise, getting in and free. And the, and the headline act is uh, you've got three Third. bands. They start yep. at uh, 4. What's at 4.30. It? Yep. J, J3 at 4.30, uh, Nathan Barges Band at 6, and 38 Special at 8. And fireworks at 9.30. Yeah. So the whole thing is all wrapped up there. Yes, sir. And one day with plenty of parking. Well, good stuff, man. Thank you so much. Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. And I'm going to play you out with some 38 nice. special, Nick. What do you think? I love it. Right? <laughs> Don't try this at home. I'm a professional. <laughs>